Good evening, everybody. This is Joe Joseph and Gwen Caldwell here for the Thursday edition of Freedom Link Radio. And uh, before we get to our guest, I just want to make a point to people that we are affecting change in this country, and we're doing it in, in a good way. And uh, the way I want to show that to you, MSNBC did a poll about last night's presidential debate, the Republican debate at the Reagan National Library. And uh, out of 195,550 votes cast thus far as to who won the debate, Ron Paul has 56.1% of the vote, or 109,624 votes. The next person behind them, behind him, is Mitt Romney with 14.9%. They're totally blacking out Ron Paul from uh, the media and everything else, and the alternative media is picking him up and a good, bare-bones, no BS, grassroots campaign is underway and I'm confident that if we continue the full court press on this, that we can actually affect some change and actually see Ron Paul ascend to the presidency. It's, it's going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be something that uh, it's going to be constant work. But Gwen, I think we can do it. Yeah. I, I tell you, we do need some change. That's for sure. And our guest is affecting change. So it's it's happening here and there and everywhere, you know. It's it's um it's emerging. It is. G introduce our guest tonight, would you, Gwen? I would with honor. Ah, uh, welcome, <laughs> Chaske Denny. Um, he is the ambassador for uh, uh, for the UN uh, of Turtle Island Federation and uh, the Dakota Treaty Sioux uh, Nation. I think I got that right, Denny. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Hello, hello. I uh, want to greet my relatives who are listening out there. Ho, midakulapi. Yeah, uh, there's uh, a change that has been taking place intellectually and diplomatically within our people, and uh, we know that the Great Spirit is guiding us to understand this language, to understand our situation, to understand what has happened, and to understand what we must do to cause change so that our people can return to sovereignty. If you're in a tribe, you cannot assert a treaty. The only way you can assert a treaty is you have to give back your American citizenship, give back your Social Security, give back your tribal enrollment number, and get off the voter registration list. Once you're out of that, then you can become sovereign. And there's many of us that have done that. Right now, there's 11 nations that have taken a step forward. One of them is in the UN right now. That's the kingdom, kingdom of Atui, Hawaiian kingdom. And uh, with our paperwork and documents, we want to, uh, everybody to understand that those people that have signed treaties with us in the past, England, France, Spain, uh, America, those are our allies. So we're not, we're not trying to do anything radical or violent or anything, but by their own words and by these treaties, which we have now come to understand the meaning. And with the international codification system, then those words take on power. Never before have we ever been able to have a voice, but now we're being heard all the way to the UN. So I'm, I'm, I just want to say that sovereignty is here, and it's up to each individual to understand that, and I believe that if they pray to the Great Spirit, the Great Spirit is going to open their mind so that they will understand. And I'm no better than anybody else. I'm not no intellectual genius. I'm not anything. I'm just an ordinary person. Uh, I, I believe in the sacred ways that were given to us, and, uh, and I'm real thankful for our ancestors and all those who have struggled in the past to bring us to this point in this future so that we can stand on our own and determine the future for our own people instead of others who have no uh, emotion, no compassion, making decisions for us. 
So I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to be here to speak on uh, this issue uh, and help people to understand what we're doing and where we're at and where we're going. Well, Chosky, let me ask you, what, what, um, how did this all come about? When did there become such a, uh, uh, a need for this type of movement within the Indian nations? And can regular American citizens also take part in uh, taking their sovereignty back? Okay, first of all, you know, uh, there was over 370-some treaties signed by the United States government. And so, therefore, they are our allies. But those treaties were written in the American language. And back then, those chiefs and our ancestors who signed those treaties, they went by the spoken word. And in in many instances, sacred items like the, the pipe was utilized. And so our word was given, and it was our bond. And we do know that, you know, that the Americans, what they wanted was land for their citizens. And we agreed, yeah, that would that would be good. And all along, since the first treaties, which go back to uh, were uh, uh, on the East Coast with the Iroquois Confederacy, they had a, a, a system of government there that the United States actually patterned their constitution after. It was called the Great Law of Peace, and they lived under what they called the One Rule, which means that you're going to live within what the Great Spirit has designed for you in your territory. So when they made these treaties with another nation, they called it the Two Rule Wampum, which means you're going to live side by side with that nation, no matter who it is. It just happened to be the colonists. So... They, they begin uh, 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 communications, and they were existing in uh, reciprocity. And England made treaties with them, and it goes back to before 1630, before the United States became what, what they are today. Uh, the United States, we do know, uh, in the, they separated from England because of taxes, and we do know that the international countries would not have anything to do with them economically, meaning they couldn't sell their furs, they couldn't sell their tobaccos. And so uh, they had to come to some kind of an agreement. So they sent various individuals over there to England to talk about this. And eventually they said, well, if you register under the BAR, which is the British Authorizing Registry, as a corporation, then we can do business. So instead of calling themselves the United Colonies of America, they elevated their own status from colonies to states. And that's what we have today. Oh, so since then, its citizens pay taxes. And so what we're looking at is a tax-paying corporation. All of its shareholders, which are citizens, must pay taxes. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But for us, the native, then... We were more or less manipulated into two very strong anti-sovereignty acts. Number one, the 1924 Indian Citizenship Act. Number two, the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act. And when our people signed that, our, our nation signed that, then they lowered their status from sovereign nation status to tribe status. And in tribe status, you're under somebody. You're under the states and you're under the feds. And that has limited us, and it's not working. So, <laughs> well, hold on. When we come back from break, Chaske, I want to get into how it's not working okay. and how you affect change now and in the foreseeable future. We'll be right back. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Don't go away.
Welcome back, folks, to Freedom Link Radio. Anybody that has any questions, come. You know, it's a, it, you know, at CenturyLink.net. That's the Freedom Link at CenturyLink.net. And we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions you have, any comments about the show, or if you need any information about the things that we've talked about tonight or in the past, and or have any suggestions, by all means, uh, just shoot us an email. But our, our guest tonight, Chaske Denny, who is a uh, the ambassador of uh, the United, uh, what is it, United Turtle Nation? Is that what it is? The United Nation of, oh, how do you, what, what's the official name, Chaske Denny? United Nations of Turtle Island Federation. Of Turtle Island Federation. Okay, very good. And, you know, before the break, you kind of gave a background of uh, the history of your relationship as, uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Native Americans to um, th the countries that we know, America, England, France, and everything else. But now you guys are, uh, you're taking your sovereignty back. and. Yes, and that's fantastic. How do people, how do people uh, who who are not part of the Indian nations uh, come and join you in exerting and, and trying to exercise their sovereignty? Okay, well, number one, you know, they're American citizens. And we're not Native American or American Indian. We are our original jurisdiction treaty signatory name, Sioux Nation of Indians, Dakota Sioux Nation of Indians, Cherokee Nation of Indians. Those are the names that are on the treaties. It's not Eastern Band Cherokee or Western Band Cherokee or uh, Santee Sioux Tribe of Nebraska. We know that of Nebraska or of South Dakota puts you under the state, not equal to or above it our nation to nation. So we repatriated ourselves from everything that's American back to our original jurisdiction, original sovereignty, and original treaty name. So we have allies, which are the Americans, and there are certain benefits that we can extend to them if they become a friend and ally of us. Right now, they're an ally by treaty. If they become a friend of ours, there are certain things that they can do. And I'll give you an example of that right now. Uh, down here in Cherokee country, uh, lands were given back by the owner, who was an American, back to the Cherokee Nation of Indians. First, they signed a Friends and Allies Agreement. Then this land was given to Cherokee Nation of Indians. Of course, the the court wanted a, a, a full acknowledgement that he he was uh, doing this of his own volition and he wasn't mentally crazy or anything like that. And the guy signed it, you know, yeah, I, I want to do this. He gave his land back to the Cherokee Nation of Indians. The Cherokee Nation of Indians, in turn, gave him a document stating that that land, that person can live on that land in perpetuity forever wow and he will not pay taxes on that land but the jurisdiction of the land will be under cherokee nation of indians now can so, any can anybody do that as far as uh uh being a friend and ally like for example 